Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and this is a video based on Vicki Borlaug's PowerPoint presentation based on the addition rule for probability. I wish to thank Mrs. Borlaug for allowing me to use her PowerPoint to make this set of videos on probability. This series should be in three or four parts. We will pick up exactly where we left off in video one in example two. There are 50 students, 18 taking English, 23 taking math, 10 are taking English, whoops I got click happy, 10 taking English and math. Let me read that again. There are 50 students, 18 are taking English, 23 are taking math, and 10 are taking English and math. If one is selected at random, find the probability that the student is taking English or math. For our purposes, for this problem, E represents taking English, M represents taking math. Let's first do this solution using the Venn diagrams. First, we'll draw a Venn diagram, our box with two circles, E for taking English, M for taking math. In this example, we will fill up the Venn diagrams with the number of students. First, we fill in where the events overlap. That is always the first step. The overlap is the intersection or the AND statement. So looking at our words, the number of students taking English and math is 10. So we will place 10 in the overlap of our circle. As I help students, knowing what to do first seems to be a stumbling block for those students. So always remember to start with that overlap. The number of students taking English is 18. That means that the total number of students in the E circle will be 18. We already have 10 students, so do the subtraction, 18 minus 10 will leave us 8. The number of students taking math is 23. We already have 10 students in the math circle, 23 minus 10 gives us 13. The box represents the entire sample space of students which we were told there were 50 students. Notice how we're working backwards here again and the 50 is the last thing that we look at. To find the number of students that are not in either English or math, simply take 50 and subtract the 8 the 10 and the 13, which should leave us the 19 students. With our Venn diagram completed, it's now to go, time to go back and find the probability that we're looking for. We're looking for the probability of English or math. English or math is this shaded region here. And we can add those numbers together, 8, 10, and 13, out of the total number of students, which is 50. Do the division on your calculator, and that will give you 0.62. We can also find the same solution using the formula. The probability of E or M is the probability of E 
plus the probability of M minus the probability of E and M. We do not want to count the AND twice. The probability of E is 18 out of 50, 18 students taking English out of the total of 50, plus the probability of M, which is the 23 students out of 50, the probability of taking math is the 23 out of 50, but remember we counted those 10 students taking English and math twice, once for the English, once for the math, so we'll subtract those 10 students back out once so that we have the correct number of students. So that would be 18 over 50 plus 23 over 50 subtracting 10 over 50 and that will give us the 0.62 as well. Here is a class activity or a problem for you to try. You may wish to pause the screen and try it. Example number three. We have a population of apples and pears. Each member of this population can be described in two ways. By the type of fruit and whether it has a worm or not. And we will make a table to organize this data. Apples and pears, worms and no worms. How many apples without a worm do we have? Five. With a worm, three. Pears, without a worm, four. Pears with worms, two. Add up the subtotals. Five plus four is nine. Three plus two is five. Five plus three is eight. Four plus two is six. And a grand total, eight plus six is 14, as well as nine plus five is 14. Or if we just counted the pictures at the top, we still get 14. So we have the grand total of 14. Our experiment is one is selected at random. Find the probability that it is a pear and has a worm. B, it is a pear or has a worm. So we'll compare these two questions. Solution to 3A, the pear and a worm. Well, we've circled the pears, we'll circle the worm, and is the overlap or intersection of these groups. And that would be the two. We have two that are both a pair and have a worm. So that would be 2 out of 14 or 0.1429. Let's look at 3B. For the pair or worm, again, let's shade what we want in our table. The pairs, the worms, and shade. Since we're looking for the OR, we want to shade the union. We want to shade all of the groups. We would add 4 plus 2 plus 3, which would be equal to 9 over 14, or 0 0.6429. We have an alternate solution to 3B where we could use the formula. Pair or worm would be the probability of pair plus the probability of worm minus the probability of pair and worm. The probability of pair would be 6 out of 14. That's all of the pairs together. The probability of worm would be 5 out of 14, all of the worms. But remember that by doing that, we have added the 2 twice. 4 plus 2 equals 6. 3 plus 2 equals 5. So we need to subtract the 2 from where we added it twice, and we still get the same answer of 0.6429. Here is a second activity that you may like to pause 
and try for yourself. Thank you for watching this video and I hope it was a good introduction for you to the addition rule of probability. I do have other videos on probability that may be of some help to you and as always Walter State students are welcome to stop by and see me in the math lab in MBS 222.